<laughs> Colin Quinn in studio, entertaining everybody today. It's the Opie and Anthony show. He just gave Jimmy a uh, 10, 15 minutes uh, man to man back rub. Yeah. Man to man. That's a good one, all right. Norton's suffering from a pinched nerve. I know. He hasn't slept and he just looks miserable. He, really he looks does. tired and miserable. We got uh, Dr. Kaku waiting to come on the show. We're going to have him on in a few minutes. He's got a new book out called. Is it his first book? I don't even know. No, he's had other books. Jimmy's obsessed he's with He's the uh, best-selling Kaku. author of Hyperspace. Ah! It was also uh, one of his books. <laughs> Hyperspace. Well, the new book is Physics of the Impossible. I like how he puts uh, uh, theories, these uh, scientific theories, behind some of the science fiction we've had in the past and uh, on, on, on t TV shows and stuff. And kind of puts it in... Uh, in perspective, you know? Like time travel, hyperspace, things like that. Yes. I, uh, not to belabor the old uh, image of Anthony, but can you just see him stuffing his nose in Ray Bradbury to just try to shut out the drunken brawl between his family members? <laughs> I don't want to feel pain. I don't want to feel pain. I want to be in the time travel field. I want to be able to go back in time. Psychological time, time travel. <laughs> I want to go back in time. <laughs> Hey, so yeah, I can I can help my family. Himself, practicing the hitching and swings. <laughs> apparently, I hate physics. No, hate you hitching and swinging literally. Yeah, I know. I understand that. <laughs> I, I I just wanted I to yell out that too. I hate physics. But Me why? I failed every. every but Jimmy is very interested in uh, Doctor Kaku and his he, theories, and he, it should be uh, some very good radio. You you can't not be interested. In I just don't want to. I, I just don't want to feel like I'm back in high school, like uh, having that. I feel, oh, feel like no. I, my brain is short circuiting. No. I'm trying to out this physics crap. How do you think Dr. Cock would feel if he knows Jimmy's fascinated and he only took one semester at Essex Community College? <laughs> <laughs> don't try to you're trying to play catch up on your idiocy now. Please don't try it. <laughs> you're like kind of naturally smart, but you're not well bred and you're not educated. I happen to Drop have a it. better grasp on theoretical physics physics than you think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm as stupid as I come. Doesn't Colin make you feel dumb? Yeah. <laughs> no. No, not at all. Because I know what I am. My limitations. I'm a creep and a kind of a half dummy who thinks he's smart. Right about this now, Dr. Kaku's is thinking, where am I? What am I doing here? I yeah. think he'll enjoy this. Yeah, we'll, we'll have some fun. Do you think he noticed the look of fear in Jim's eyes when Jim asked him some idiotic question? He turned him and he was afraid of being exposed. He's like, ah. I <laughs> <laughs> like when voice acted with Tim. We got Dr. Kaku next. We got Colin Quinn. You staying for the big uh, interview with the physicist? Yeah, yeah. This is, this is, this is One of my favorite staying. people. I'm very happy he's here. Yeah. You ride with him in an elevator. Shut up. Oh, yeah. boy. I give him the creeps, too. <laughs> Maybe because you were 112 on the bestseller list. <laughs> Oh, 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 that wasn't even nice. Well, if I'd gotten a celebrity to write the forward, maybe I would have done oh! that. <laughs> oh, forward written by Colin Quinn. Oh, oh that had you hurt. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that didn't help sales, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now we just saying, yeah, you're right. I suck. Opie and Anthony, lots going on. Stay there. <laughs> Moving right along, it's the Opie and Anthony show. Colin Quinn in studio. And now we welcome Dr. Kaku to the Opie and Anthony show. I want to start by asking you uh, how well you did on your SATs in high school. Uh, well, I got 800 in the SATs. And uh, in high school, actually, I built an Atmos Smasher. Uh, that's what got me into Harvard. Um, I assembled uh, 500 pounds of transformer steel, 22 miles of copper wire. I blew on every single circuit breaker in my mom's house. Every time the lights went out, my mom would shake her head and say, why couldn't I have a son who plays baseball? Maybe if I give him a basketball. And why can't he find a nice Japanese girl? I mean, what's wrong with my son? He builds these atom smashers in the garage. An atom smasher. Yeah, well, it got me into Harvard, so I can't complain. Mm, I, I guess not, but how do you, how do you do that? How do you just build an atom smasher? Uh, well, in high know, school. Yeah, when I was a kid, I used to devour all the stuff. Uh, you know, Flash Gordon. Uh, I used to watch all the Flash Gordon series. Mm -hmm. But I realized very early in life I didn't have blonde hair. I didn't have muscles, and I was not going to get the girl like in Flash Gordon. But Dr. Zarkov, I mean, he fascinated me. I mean, he was the man who built starships. He, he was the man who built ray guns and cities in the sky. And I said to myself, that's for me. Yeah. 
It, wow. See, Anthony, if, I, if your dad didn't get in the way, you could have been Dr. I know. Taco. I was so yeah. I was You, you so had into very science. similar upbringings, but Anthony's yeah. father didn't want him doing any of this stuff. Uh, I see. He well, smashed his yeah. microscope and everything as a kid. I see. Well, the, the fork in the road, right? You yeah, it was that back. fork in the road thing, and it was um, girls and uh, maybe some marijuana. Uh, no contest. And then, uh, yeah, science and uh, my love of, of science, and boy... Uh, that was an easy crossroads. I took the uh, <laughs> took the evil road. Well, but, you know, uh, so many people are interested in science. Look at the movies, right? All the Hollywood blockbusters. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you like Star Wars and Star Trek, you're going to love Physics of the Impossible because I'm a Trekkie myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, this book addresses all the things that you see in Back to the Future and the Terminator series and uh, the Time Machine. So people like looking at that also. They like seeing things that were made a few years back and seeing how our advancements kind of tie into uh, shows like Star Trek, mm -hmm. where they're walking around with uh, you know a tricorder and a communicator. And here we have cell phones and PDAs that are... You know, similar uh, uh, to uh, what they had in, in uh, the TV show. That's right. When you watch uh, Star Trek, I mean, it's like watching something from the 50s because we have all that stuff now. Yeah, it's not. We, we have everything except transporters and uh, warp drive, and we're working on those, by the way. Uh, we have cell phones already, mm -hmm. and the transporter, we can already teleport atoms now. This has made big news in the physics community, shockwaves. We can teleport atoms. One day, we will teleport Captain Kirk. There's a catch, though. There's always a catch. Yeah, what's the catch? The catch is you have to die going through the transporter. <laughs> you have, to, you die. have to die. And, you know, your body is reconstituted, you know, someplace else with the same memory, the same neural circuits, the same genes. And that Captain Kirk over there says, I'm Captain Kirk. But you just saw Captain Kirk die. And so then wh wh where did your soul go? <laughs> so is it, is it making a copy? It's making a copy. Like uh, the Prestige. Like the movie The Prestige. Oh, yeah. They oh, were uh, making copies yeah. of people, yeah. Oh, you saw the movie Jumper, right? Mm hmm Yeah, the movie Jumper. Actually, some physicists helped to consult on that movie Jumper. Really? Where you disappear and you reappear someplace else, except in real teleportation, you have to die to do it. It's one of the drawbacks of the program. Boy, that is. <laughs> yeah, that would definitely be an asterisk that would keep yeah. it from signing it's up. like, hey, you got there fast, but... Mm. Yeah, death is definitely a downer. But there you are, someplace else. Same memory, same personality quirks, same everything. I mean, who is the real you if you just died and yeah. there you are someplace else? All right, so what exactly is, like, uh, uh, the Hubble telescope was built yeah. to see the beginning of time. That's right. It's gotten relatively close, but, like, there's something in the way and it can't see the actual... They want to see, like, the, the explosion, the beginning of it all. Well, we have uh, baby pictures of the Big Bang now. Uh, the explosion itself, we photographed it. Uh, go to the website, nasa.gov. Of, type W map, that's the name of the satellite, and we have baby pictures of the explosion. It really looks like an explosion. It's in the microwave region. We can't see the instant, however, of the explosion itself. However, that the next generation of space satellites should be able to give us the instant of creation itself, and that's going to be great. We're going to see the universe come out of the womb and maybe, maybe an umbilical cord connecting our infant universe to a parent universe. A parallel universe. It's so it's so hard to wrap your mind around what was there before the Big Bang because yeah. uh, you know it, 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 there had to be something. Yeah, well, we think we know what happened before the beginning. Uh, the new picture is a bubble bath. Uh, next time you t t take a bubble bath, each bubble represents a baby universe. We live on the skin of the bubble, just like flies fly trapped on flypaper. We can't escape. But there are other universes out there. This is called the multiverse idea. You're freaking me out now. Yeah, man. and believe it or not, in one of these universes, Elvis Presley could still be alive. I mean, blows the mind, right? <laughs> Is he healthier, or is he like still shaped like Colin? At the end of the <laughs> oh, God. See how that hurts Colin when they start poking fun in the middle of a physics discussion? Yeah, what? in a parallel universe. Oh, no, you. Jim, I don't think you really wanted to get me into this, because I wrote down a few of your lines you said to the doctor oh, oh, before no. you got on yeah, the Yeah, they were air. having a little small chat before we got back yeah, with the show. And Tom was Jim, if you could have seen, folks, observing, the yeah. phoniness, yeah. Norton leaning in the doctor with a bewildered look on his face going, what, I guess this guy's like a fan. Norton starts trying to talk. Here's what he said. Uh, your book's doing well, though, for a science book to be in the top. Uh, uh, oh. Because your competition. No, what I was saying well, was. Is no, that that's a, a direct quote. No, you For a you, science book to be in the top. Uh, uh, 
because you're competition. You, you took me out of context. <laughs> that makes me sound like a fool. <laughs> I was saying is that the book is now number 12 on the bestseller list. I know. Which yeah. is amazing because amazing. you're competing with a lot of non-science books. And for a scientific right, book... Right, that guys be, like you... But you were kind of the way yeah. you were saying it, the tone, non-science books that guys like us wouldn't sully our hands with, doctor. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> nine science well, books. You Why know, do you that, say like your just, idiotic book? Admit a, to him that's who he's competing against. They're just you're a nonsense. lot of people. A lot of people out there have watched the Terminator. They've watched Back to the Future. And they wonder what happens if you go backwards in time. Right. 